and women in the world. And you're one of them. <laughs> in the same room, I told Kathy Lee Gifford that she was one also. <laughs> and if I ever make Taylor Swift, she's going to be in them. <laughs> if I meet her, I'm going to tell her that you said that. That's very sweet of you. It's very sweet. Thank you. Of all the people that you've worked with, uh, is there one that kind of sticks out um, that you really enjoyed working with? and? So you want to work with... You know, before I answer that question, I have to give that guy a hug. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let's see. All right, well, I would say Pink was probably one of my favorite sessions. It's one of those times in your life where you go, wow, why would I ever get in a room with anyone who doesn't inspire me the way you do? Well, the, que the reason is because there aren't that many artists out there that are as inspiring as, her, as she is. She has this way of just being so honest and telling her truth and not making excuses for it. And I think that's why she's so relevant today, is that she doesn't hide and she doesn't um, worry about what other people think. And I think I learned a lesson from her in that day, and that's when I, when I wrote this book, I tried to be as honest as I could and as scary as that was, because if you don't go there as a writer, how are you going to ever affect anybody? People want the truth. They respond to the truth. And she has a knack for that. On top of that, she is one of the best writers I've ever worked with and one of the best vocalists. She sang the song sober in three takes and every single person in that room their mouth was just like hanging open and we were jumping up and down high-fiving each other and she was like what's wrong with you people like, what's all this commotion I do this every day she didn't even she doesn't even realize how amazing she is so I would say that was one of my favorite um, co-running sessions and I know the song's called sober but I was anything but sober when we wrote that Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, Good. I, I listened to the whole audio book yesterday. It's well, awesome. Thank you so much. I am lucky enough to know how amazing you are oh, in I person. See. And now, after reading the book, I think you're just even more amazing. And oh, thank you. you so much. Thank you, you so much. I, I love to always see you. It's like one of my best fans. I feel like if I went to Austria, I'd be like, oh, there you are. You could go anywhere. It's awesome. <laughs> Questions, but a limited. Um, the Ashley Simpson part mm -hmm. of the book, where you were saying that you were like all pissed off that you weren't on the MTV. Yeah. Show, do you know that you actually are on the MTV show? I have it. You do? I thought it was just my me. No. Really? I ha I can show it to you later. Oh, well, I better see that then. I got to rewrite the book. I thought it was my me. <laughs> no, you're on it. You're what did... writing the song and yeah. Really? All right, I got to see this because then maybe maybe I jumped the gun and saw one part and then just got upset with the artist and called my lawyer just like a fiery Italian. I don't know. I got to see that. Um, can I also ask why I'm not sitting in the VIP section of the Highline Ballroom right now? Oh, I don't know, but I'll make sure that happens. Okay. I have your email, I think, but you give it to me again. Okay. Well, I mean, I have a ticket, but. All right, we'll make that happen. But why did this contest get? Oh, just because with all this touring, I couldn't have done it. There's no way. There's no way. You know, doing a book tour, is, it's almost as intense as being introduced on American Idol. So you just, you know, you, you're up at 4 in the morning, you go to bed at 10. It just, I would have been, like, dying on that stage. But now i got to see this Ashley thing. Maybe it was on another episode. I don't know. We'll look at it. Okay. Hi. Hi. Has being on American Idol changed? Was it somewhere at all? Mm, has it changed me? Well, I'm doing a lot more country writing. I've been doing a lot more country writing for some, and stuff with Carrie, huh, country fans. Huh? Yeah. Um, I think that sometimes it's hard for me to be in the pop market today just because, you know, I'm 40 now. I ain't shorty hanging out at the clubs. Like, it's not what I do. So it's hard for me to talk that jargon. So I really love country because you can still be a 40-year-old woman and relate 
storylines that are um, a little bit more complex than pop today. So, I mean, I don't think that American Idol really has changed that. I think that, you know, I've just grown up a little bit. Or a lot. Yeah, I mean, find someone who does have a good voice. And, you know, you can write lines and music and, and give them lyrics and melody and say, you know, this is what it is. And even if you're not singing that well, if they're a good singer, they'll be able to hear where you're going. So I think part of how I got a lot of gigs in the beginning of my career was that I could sing. And producers liked that because we could have finished records. Um, you know, I'd go in and by the end of the session, it would be done. It'd be like... A record that they could sell. So I think it's really important to have someone who can help you realize your music. If that's not you, there are many people that you can find either on the internet. The internet's a great resource. You know, go to MySpace, go to YouTube, um, connect with other people in the area locally, write to your performing rights societies, BMI, ASCAP, CSAC, and find people that are in your, you know, your kind of where you're at trying to break in and team up. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, can you speak to being a woman executive in the music industry? Being a woman yeah. executive in, in the music industry is, is well, at least in the A and R departments, it's it's there aren't a lot of us. You know, I sit in um, meetings every week at Warner Brothers, and it's there's maybe three of us and twenty guys. So it's, and I always say we need some estrogen up in here. Because, you know, the, I'll, they'll say that a guy's good looking. And I'm like, what do you know if a guy's good looking? I'll tell you if he's good looking. <laughs> you know, it's so, and sometimes the music, women really buy a lot of records. So I'm always listening from the point of view of a woman, too. So I think our perspective is needed in the music industry. It's not always there. Um, you know, it was tough for me in the beginning, and I, I explained in the book, to be taken seriously. Um, because really... All I wanted to do was write songs and, and, and be successful at that. But um, sometimes it's not normal to see a woman in the studio. And that was kind of strange for men at first. But once they realized that I was good at my job, all the other, that all their stuff faded away. And, you know, the smart people will treat you that way. They'll know that you're of more value to them by helping them write big records than a, you know, potential... Hook up. Yeah. Do you watch American Idol now? And if you do, is there anyone you think will, you know, go out and have a really, really great career? Um, I, I haven't watched it that much. I've watched um, bits and pieces of it, and it looks like the judges are having a really good time. I know Steven Tyler. Um, I actually speak about that. I met him at the end of season nine. He came um, to my house one day to write one of the highlights of my life, you know, getting a call from a friend of mine who said, what are you doing right now? And I said, um, I actually had a session blow out. He's like, do you want to work with Steven Tyler? I was like, are you shitting me? <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> yes, I want to work. So he came over and I'm like, you know, putting makeup on, cleaning up the house. Uh, I dragged down this Yamaha keyboard I had, which is probably like a Yugo for him, you know, and got it set up. And um, ordered some pizza, and I swear I kept the crust. It was like Marsha. Um, so he comes there, and he's just so great, and so much good energy, and so lovely, and just the best. And he starts playing Dream On, and I'm just like, ah, you know, so dreamy. And um, I actually suggested him to the producers. So, you know, that went on to be what it is, and I'm, I'm really happy for him. He seems to be loving it. And uh, I did see a clip of that girl, I think Pia. I, mean, I liked her. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's not... American Idol is great for discovering talent and for giving someone a platform, but nothing is more important than the songs they choose and the records they make at the end of, of the season. If those records aren't right, you can't compete with Beyonce, Lady Gaga, and if you look statistically at what record sales are for the winners, they're very low. I mean, they could be 100 to 300,000 copies, and that's not enough to put you at the top of an industry. And then your song is going to be judged against the big people out there. So, 
you know, that's the part of, of Idol that's the harsh reality, which is probably why my critiques were at times harsher. Um, I personally am one of those people that, that I don't like smoke kind of blown up my... I'm not going to say it, there's kids here. Right. Um, I'd rather know the truth so I can get better. And there isn't a person, I don't care who they are, they can't get better. Beyond Everyone can get better. So I think that as somebody who's an, an industry expert, I consider myself that. It's my job to pass along that information to young people in front of me. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering what you think about the concept, because you're just talking about being a woman in the music industry, and for women who are out there making music, what you think about the fact that at some point around the time you turn 30, that the industry starts to look at you as if you need a walker. You're suddenly geriatric. And I'm wondering if you think that it really is too late at a certain age for something to happen to you. And I'm not talking about superstardom. I'm just saying being able to, to make music and not have to do something else. Um, I think that you can make music at any age if you're moving people. Um, if, if Adele walked in here and she had a walker and she started singing, I certainly would take notice. You know, it'd be like, wow, oh my God, there's like God running through you. So it's, it's about being that great. You know, if you're that great, you'll be relevant. But there's a very, very um, big margin between good and great. You know, there's a lot of good. But great doesn't always come around. You know, great is Paul Simon. Great is John Lennon. Great in today's market is somebody like Adele, Bruno Mars. You know, um, and, that, and, and how many releases do we have a year that you don't see that? So it, it really would depend. And, and for me, as a, someone who's in the industry, and I kind of consider myself a gatekeeper, and I take that really seriously. Um, I certainly, if you had a voice like that and songs like that, would listen to you regardless. If you had a paper bag over your head. Hi. Um, Fifty years from now, who is doing music now that will be heard in you know, 2016? That's a tough question. Um, wow, let me think about that. Who's an Elvis? You know, I do think that somebody like a Bruno Mars has the potential to really carry through because of his songwriting. Um, I think there's some country acts. I think Taylor Swift will be making records long into her 30s, 40s. Um, some country artists that I see that from. In the pop market, I mean, when you're talking pure pop, you know, I think about Katy Perry, I, I wonder because she's just such an incredible songwriter, but I wonder how she develops her career. And I think it's going to be different to what we're used to. Um, you know, we're, we're used to watching these artists do record after record of just incredible things. But what they've become now is more brands, you know, stars, star power. It's a different thing than it, than it was back then. Um, and I think that's what keeps them in the limelight as much as their music, is the fact that they're beautiful and they can do a commercial and they can do a movie and, and, and all of these things. So I, and when, when I think of rock bands, I mean, possibly Coldplay. But, you know, that's something that we have to worry about as A&R executives, because that's a really important point, is that who is going to be around that long? I worry about that. I wouldn't say it keeps me up at night, but I definitely worry about it. <laughs> um, first, I'd like to congratulate, congratulate you on a great interview on Howard. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, God, he got a panty shot. Jesus. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I was like, well, I don't understand. Where is that camera? Like, where, I, was, I was like, where is the camera?